Staying Alive UK. Share your story. Hello and welcome to the Share Your Story podcast series, a business biography, their story so far. I'm Michael DeGroot and I'm your host. My purpose through this podcast series is to inspire you to take the next step towards your new business venture or indeed develop your existing business even further. I only interview business owners who employ less than nine employees and mostly they will be on their own. So let's get straight to it. I am delighted to welcome Keith Higgs to today's show. Keith is an earth voyager a speaker, an author, a coach and marketing professional. And his latest book is called Fly Back to Love. Keith has lived a really interesting and exceptional life. He's a hippie searching for the truth. 20 years of international Christian-based voluntary work. Editing and publishing talks and inspirational audios. Building a successful computer business and then watching it crash and much more besides. I first met Keith at a networking event in Birmingham and instantly realised that I had known him, well, forever. I was so impressed with his story and how he has arrived at becoming an author that I wanted everyone to hear it. He also shared with me what he achieved with his Facebook group, which I'm sure he will share with us in a few minutes. Welcome, Keith. It's great to have you on today's podcast. Thank you, Michael. I'm excited to be here and really appreciate this chance to chat with you. Excellent, excellent. Well, let me start off by asking if you could share with the audience a little bit about your personal life. So where were you born? Where did you live? Where did you go to school? Maybe a bit about your family, just so people get a sense of, you know, where you've come from. Sure, Michael. I was born in Hastings quite a number of years ago now and grew up in Bexhill-on-Sea, tiny little seaside town, a lot of retired people there. Went to the Downs Secondary Modern School after kind of flunking out of private school and was lost between two worlds, two different education systems. Scraped into technical college in Hastings on a computer course in the days before there was even a computer in the entire college. Wow. Spoke to the computer by punching cards, which were then taken to the computer at the Ministry of Defense um, local building, where they actually processed the cards. Amazing in a different world from today. Onwards to becoming a, a hippie. That time was quite interesting because I did a mobile discotheque. I was disc jockeying in the college radio station, and I think they'd have thrown me out of college if it wasn't for the fact that I became social secretary of the students' union there. Went on to attempt a world record at the Isle of Wight Pop Festival in 1970, the festival of all festivals, and there a policeman came up to me in the middle of the night and said, do you realise they can hear your music on the mainland? (laughs) and when it came to asking the guinness book of records to give me the record unfortunately they said who verified it (laughs) and of course in my wild hippiness uh, we really hadn't had anybody sit around and check everything and document the whole thing so unfortunately it's an unofficial world record for non-stop disc jockeying brilliant i love it so so where do you live now keith I live just outside Birmingham uh, at a place called Tiverdale. Right. I Lovely. moved there after 17 years near Saffron Walden in the top corner of Essex when a rather large house that had housed my once very busy computer business was sold, giving me a third, an ex a third, and the bank a third. And I couldn't find anywhere down there for what I was going to get to fit my king size bed in. <laughs> right. Brilliant. So, so with the confusion in your education and then getting into the computer business, what, what made you decide to run your own business? 
Well, there was there was a gap of twenty years voluntary work all over the world. Right. Uh, in the meantime, before my computer business started, and during that time, I'd been persuading big companies to donate computers and teaching people how to use them as a part of that twenty years. And when my kids got too big to drag around the world, I had a large family. At that point, when we left um, India and Sri Lanka, we had seven children and one more coming later on in London. Wow. And I came back to the country with nothing but a damaged suitcase, which gave me some money in compensation and had to start all over again. That was an interesting journey, and it involved thinking about what I was going to do, a business course um, in the old days when they actually helped you study and find out about business, and then selling a second-hand computer and buying two, and selling two and buying four, and selling four and buying eight, and it grew and grew until roughly seven or eight years later, I had a million-pound turnover, which was my goal. Brilliant. And that was just by buying and selling computers. Yes, it started like that. And it, it grew into a, a very big business with the computer fairs. And what happened at the fairs? Well, I would, when it grew to the size it, it eventually did, come in the morning with a long wheelbase, high top Mercedes van, totally full of computer equipment set it all up on a spread that would be 30 to 40 feet long and offer bare bones computers, computers, components. I was an Epson, Epson Premier dealer to the public. And in its heyday, sometimes they had to stop people coming into the halls because there were too many people in the halls and people would stand waving money to buy things from us. Given a few years later, when the internet had taken over, the big companies had dropped their prices and were selling things cheaper than cost sometimes, um, instead of taking 10 grand in a day and making 20% profit, we would take 200 pounds and make a loss of a couple of hundred pounds. Right. So were you doing this? What, you, what, what decade was this? Gosh, decades, dates and times. I guess this was about 25 years ago. Okay, okay. So in the 90s, right? Yep. So this is really interesting. So this was at the time when Apple and Microsoft were doing their thing, right? That's right. And, you know, Apple started as this kind of hobbyist computer people that were building computers and things in garages and, and whatever. So you were literally doing this stuff at, at around about the same time as all of that was taking off. Yes. In the voluntary work, I remember one of the jobs that I had was helping people transfer information that had all been on Apple Euro classes, really early Apple computers, onto PCs. Wow. There's another story that's that's kind of funny. I was helping translators with their work, and I needed to get a program that would actually put foreign characters and print foreign characters on the screen. And I remember walking down Tottenham Road in its heyday asking people, and they laughed at me when I asked for this program. And I had to actually create, in, in kind of code, the commands to be able to print the different characters in Polish, for instance. Yeah. And years later, of course, anything can do all of these things, you know. I know. <laughs> it was all impossible. Oh, my God. Wow. That, that, I mean, that for you to have seen and been involved in that business and where things are now today, my God, is just unrecognisable, I bet. Totally. Complete change. And if you didn't keep on the bus of change... You fell off. Absolutely. And in a way, that's what happened with the end of my computer business. The computer fairs died. The hobbyists that were building computers for their friends, basically their friends could buy the computer cheaper than buying the components anymore. And the big companies cut off the smaller guys. Very interesting. 
very interesting. So then what happened? So when when did it all disappear? You know, what dec- decade are we in now in, in the 2000s? Yeah, I it, it ended for me, and this is going to be very rough, about seven years ago. Okay. So 2009, 2010, um, the computer fairs had pretty much died, and it had become too much anyway. I was working for a real slave driver of a boss that didn't let me take a break, and that was me, by the way. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, being your own boss. Find out, you know. <laughs> you want to please all the customers all the time, and unfortunately, it's impossible. It, even when you answer the phone at eleven o'clock at night, when somebody's got a problem. So then, what? How did you feel about this thing? You know, disappearing something that you'd worked so hard for for so many years and drove yourself very hard to work all the hours to build and then seeing that all kind of disappear? Well, at the time, failure is tough. And I had to cut everything to the bone and many times into the bone, our expenses. Of course, you had you know insurance policies that were a £1,000 a year, um, all of those different things that a business has in its heyday, and suddenly when it's going downhill, they are strangling you. So at the time it was tough, but I look back now and think, thank God, because if I'd have carried on like that, who knows, we might not have been able to have this conversation today. I'd watched one of the entrepreneurs in computing who had turned his business from something similar to mine into a very well-known company, but the cost that I saw in him with drink, nervousness, chain smoking, and many other things, yeah. I knew what I didn't want, and I wasn't going to let it happen to me. So now I look back at that failure as a victory because I now have the time and leisure to be able to do more of what I want when I want, primarily due actually to a very small part-time network marketing business that I bolted on originally to help my computer customers to save money on their bills. Sure, sure. Fantastic. Now, where I would like to get to as quickly as possible, so thank you so much for that background. That that really paints a lovely picture about, you know, this isn't, this, isn't, this podcast isn't just about sugar-coated, about, you know, success stories. At the end of the day, I don't believe there's such thing as failure. There's only learning. And you learned a huge amount and you just said it was a victory. It wasn't a failure. So now where I'd like to get to is your current project, because I think that is absolutely fascinating. And your current project is your book and your website and your Facebook page or group, I should say. And the title is Fly Back to Love. So tell us a little bit about the history and how that took birth and where did that come from? Sure. Um, The book started actually as a talk. And the talk was entitled, and actually just to correct slightly, the title of the book is actually Take Control of Your Spacecraft and Fly Back to Love. Of course, the emphasis is on Back to Love. Yeah. So the talk was designed to share on an MLM cruise in Florida where a lot of different people from different organizations get together and have fun and share ideas. And unfortunately, the talk never happened. But actually, that unfortunately was yet another of those failures that is great because Had I given the talk, it probably would have disappeared into the dust. But because time ran out, that talk was burning inside. And the the purpose of the talk was to help people understand what held them back from successes. Many people start many things full of enthusiasm, whether it's joining a golf club, whether it's joining a health club on New Year, that's appropriate for this time, isn't it? Or whether it's a network marketing business. And something stops them, something holds them back from the successes that they believe that they could have in a moment of enthusiasm. And the talk was designed to help people understand those blocks, 
and then give them tools to overcome those blocks. And that was burning inside of what am I going to do with this when I was in a New Year's workshop and we were creating a vision board. And I desired to find two more pictures for the vision board in the last 10 minutes of the workshop and thought, what do I want? And one was a trip to China, and the second one was the book. I went to the table where people were madly rustling through magazines, looking in the last 10 minutes for the pictures they wanted, and picked up the first magazine, opened it up, and on the very first page was a picture of the Great Wall of China, and it said, explore new places. Wow. I thought, wow, yes. Okay, where is my book? And I flipped open a few more pages into the same magazine, and there were four books. So that was so exciting and a confirmation of what was coming in the next year. The trip to China happened in April, a few months later, for a fraction of the price that I expected, and much earlier than I expected. And then on return, I thought, what about the book? And an email came in from Hay House a few days later saying, come to our writer's workshop. Hmm. And I thought, well, if I'm going to write a book, that sounds like a good start. Absolutely. And so the writer's workshop was the next part of the process. They broke it to us in the very first day that writing was no longer the same as it has been for years. And a writer has to also be prepared to create a platform, be the publicist, and do much of the work involved in not just writing the book, but its production and helping people to find out about it. Quite right, yeah. And how is that going? Well, as always in life, it could be better. However, I set about building a platform, first looking at Twitter and creating many followers, 1,600 personal followers, 1,100 for a book page, but unfortunately discovered that the impressions every time you tweet just go by so quickly that on average, something between 25 and 50 people, what Twitter calls impressions, were actually seeing what I was writing. So I moved to Facebook joined a number of personal growth, spirituality type groups, which is the subject of my book, and started posting sections of what I was writing and then personally speaking to people, messaging people, inviting them to join a Facebook group that I created called Awake Your Dreams. And that group has gone from nothing in August of the year before last to now today there are almost 8,000 members. That is incredible. If I can just pause for a minute there, to go from nothing in the year before last, so from 2014, correct? Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> 18 I, months, basically. <laughs> I want to make sure because people might be listening to this in the future. So we're, we're saying in, in less than a, oh, a, about a year and a half or so, um, you have built from nothing to 8,000 members on a Facebook group, which is absolutely incredible. And I know you do this really personally. So share with the people that are listening how you've built that to that size. Well, when I've posted in different Facebook groups, um, I get notifications of likes. And so when the people liked what I posted, I would send them a personal message. And depending on what I felt about their profile, if they resonated with what I did, I would ask them to be friends and also ask them if they would like to join my Facebook group, Awake Your Dreams, which is pretty much just quote pictures from Messages of inspiration. Brilliant. Brilliant. And, of course, it's also a platform where you can share with people 
about your book and your guidebook and your website and what you've created for them, correct? Yes, that's correct. Although I think even that day has started to change because Facebook is limiting the number of messages and the number of posts and moves quite quickly as well now. Yeah. So I really starting to believe that the best way to share something is to get in front of people and talk about it with passion. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so now let's just get into the book a little bit because it's about personal development and spirituality and love and goals and dreams and desires. But could you, in your own words, just share with us why did you write about that subject? And then what can people expect without giving the whole plot away? <laughs> but what, what can people expect to achieve by reading this book? The book is a journey. It starts when we wake up in this earthly spacecraft. I loved Wayne Dyer. I read most of his work and met him. And he shares that we are not physical beings looking for a spiritual solution, but we are spiritual beings here to enjoy an earthly voyage. Now, there's one problem with that earthly voyage. We're dumped in this body, and before we're really aware, the auto-programming of the body, the subconscious mind has been set up by our parents, our schools, our religions, even our ancestors in our DNA, to work in certain ways. Now, this is a good thing in many cases, because imagine if I wanted to get out of bed and I had to work out which of the muscles and nerves to fire to actually help me get up. Just like a toddler, I'd be toddling around, if that, and take the whole day doing that. So the automatic programming of our bodies are very important. But when we start to drive down the road of life and want to choose success, be an entrepreneur, start our own businesses, or step outside of the ordinary, all kind of alarm bells go off from the safety features of that. The little voice that says don't talk to strangers that's still buried from that subconscious programming means maybe it's difficult to get in front of a room and share with people about what we want. Or maybe it's the meanings we've made. All of those things hold us back from our success. And unless we take an inventory of them, work out what they're saying and then reprogram them, then we're not going to get very far in the journey of our success and our gauges of success, happiness, wealth, and health and relationships will be pretty stuck on levels that we didn't choose. So the book has tools, ideas, and methods of actually understanding and then reprogramming those basic commands that don't serve us anymore as we want to chart our own path through life. Love it. Absolutely love it. And why, why did you come up with the spacecraft analogy? Well, I guess I believe the core of us is a part of love. It is definitely very different from the being that we see with the body and a carnal mind, a subconscious mind, the controller for that is just in this body for a time on our earthly journey. And so I likened it to a spacecraft because the parallel kind of fitted and some of the lessons in the book about taking control, being the pilot, many of the different parallels that fit with that. And then, of course, one day we're going to, step outside of the spacecraft and leave it back to disintegrate to dust and move on to something far more wonderful. And, and, and do you believe this is about us taking control of our mind, our thinking, and the way we look at things? Yes. One of my early mentors said to me, when you're reading, make a list of all the quotes that really speak to you on three-by-five cards. Write them down 
and read them over and over and over. And several of the quotes that I wrote down as a part of that process said, the only way to take control of our life is to take control of our thoughts. Thoughts are things. They create. In fact, nothing in this life has ever been created without somebody thinking about it first. And if our thoughts are all, I'm a mess, I'm useless, I can't do this, it's not working, then, of course, the law of attraction says that's what we are going to be experiencing because that's what we want. So if we take control of our thoughts and rewrite them to be positive, inspiring, I am powerful, I am a creator, I can accomplish this, I am love, all of those are changes in a complete thought pattern that will take us to where we really want to go. So, Keith, I have a challenge for you, a controversial okay. one. Okay. How do we convince people in business to take something like this on board? Because they are very, let's call it, left brain orientated. It's about process. It's about, you know, it's about doing something. It's about picking up the phone. It's it's all about process and push and sell and, you know, convince people and, you know, fight against your competition and, you know, a war on your competition and whatever it might be. The business world doesn't think in the way that you are very colourfully describing how we should be different. I mean, does this apply to the business world? And how can people in business take this on board? Oh, absolutely. One of my favorite mentors, Jim Rohn, really spoke about business. He was considered America's best business advisor. And he talked about a different way of doing business. Also, anybody in business knows if they keep their computer and don't put in a new operating system every so often, it slowly grinds to a halt with all the junk that piles up in it. And to a businessman in logic, they can understand that all the junk that piles up in our mind, our computers, will also grind us to a halt over time if we don't upgrade it and keep refreshing it and have the right thoughts and the right directions. I love it. So also, for business, goal setting is such a huge, important part. Thinking out what you want to do, where you want to go, what you want to achieve, and working out the steps to get there. All of these things, it's almost like science meeting spirituality. Right now, they are so close, and the scientists and the spiritual people are coming to the same conclusion. So likewise, with business, to be really successful, like Jim Rohn said, we must seek to become the person success can find, not go hunting after success and forget what happens to hell with the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Well, for any business people that are listening, and hopefully many are, this is a different approach. You know, this is the way that things are going to work in the future. And go and check out the book, Take Control of Your Spacecraft and Fly Back to Love by Keith Higgs. So, okay, I, I really could talk for hours about this subject because I've got my own ideas and thoughts. But let's just briefly share with everybody, where can they learn about your ideas and your concepts that are written in your book? Just give a few websites or Facebook pages or where would you like them to go and have a look? Certainly. Well, the book's website is www.flybacktolove.com. It's a multimedia website that I've created recently. It includes me reading the book and also about 300 quote pictures in amongst the topics of the book to help people really visualize and see. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, and it's really true. The messages that are in the book. A member of the website can also download the audiobook, which is also going to be shortly available on iTunes and Audible and a number of other audiobook sites. 
and there's an ebook as well. My Facebook group is called www awake your dreams. Sorry, it's called www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash awake your dreams. Well, just put in awake your dreams in search inside Facebook and I'm sure people right. will find, find it. it yes. Yeah. Yeah. And if anybody wants to connect with me, if they search for Keith Higgs, I come up normally as the first person there. And is the best place for them to connect with you on Facebook? Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. I don't use that so much anymore, but I have the savings assistant and at Fly Back to Love. Okay, brilliant. I, I just want to make sure because there are some people I'm sure that are listening and they want to go away and go and check it out. So they might as well go ahead and do that. Um, so with the journeys that you've been on, there are a number of different journeys like everybody goes on. And there are lessons and ideas and concepts that you will have learned from that. So <clears throat> hopefully some business people that are, or aspiring business people are listening to this and going, right, how do I get started? How do I get started in business? What are some of the things that I need to be doing? If you had one bit of advice, I know this is really tough, but just one bit of advice you would give aspiring business owners, what advice would that be? Spend as much time feeding your mind with positive information, business books from the masters of business, personal growth books from the masters of personal growth, as you do in eating food. Love it. That sounds so simple to do. And where, where do they start? You know, how do they start? If I have never been on this journey of, of learning and feeding my mind, how do I get started with that? Because I know there will be people out there that wouldn't even know where to start. Well, my book could be a good place. In the back of the book, too, there's a list of recommended reading of many of the masters and teachers that I've learned from, spent time with, even helped some of them with their workshops. Jim Rohn is a great start for a business person. Um, on YouTube, if you search for Jim Rohn, there's a lot of his talks. I can see on your website, which I'm just looking at right now, you have a reading list as well. That's correct, yes. So these presumably are books and videos or ideas that you've enriched yourself with that helped you to move forward to go from a, you know, gift of a computer business that you could leave behind and then moving towards, you know, a more inspired and then writing a book life. Um, obviously, these people that you've read have had an impact on you in terms of achieving that. Absolutely, definitely. My purpose, I decided at one point in my journey, was to love, to learn, to teach, and to enjoy successes. And learning was sitting at the feet of many of the masters of personal growth, just taking time to drink in their words, understand what they were sharing, and in many cases, go and help them with their workshops and courses so I could learn even more from the other side. And now that wisdom is bubbling out. And I would say to anybody in business, if they don't seek to grow personally, there's not a significant hope of great success in business. All of the greats put it down to goal setting, to actually envisioning where they wanted to go, and many of the tools that come through these different modalities. Brilliant. Keith, thank you so much. I I sense that probably in a few months' time, probably six months, six months to 12 months' time, we should have another chat and see where you've got to because your journey is so interesting and 
I can't wait to hear what the next episode's going to be for you. <laughs> and and let me just repeat, it's the website is flybacktolove.com. Uh, the title of the book is Take Control of Your Spacecraft and Fly Back to Love by Keith Higgs. And on Facebook, you find his Facebook group. I highly recommend joining it. It's called Awake Your Dreams. And then, of course, find Keith Higgs on Facebook. And you better invite him quick before he hits that total number of friends that he can't go beyond, in which case you will only be able to follow him. So, Keith, I really appreciate you joining us today with all your thoughts of wisdom and your ideas. And I know that people will get massive value out of what you share today. Thank you very much. I appreciate your enthusiasm and this opportunity to, to chat with you. Brilliant. And I hope to see you very soon. Have a wonderful Christmas. Thanks, Keith. Bye. Bye-bye. Staying Alive UK. Share your story. 